This is the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner, the show that kicks 401ks in the asphalt and teaches you to be the master of your own stock investing domain. And here's your host, Greg Arthur. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. At the time of this recording, we have an amazing story that most people are completely unaware of. We're going to take a look at this story. And we're going to see what the stock market can add to it. In my opinion, this story is a little, this story is a little scary, but let's see what you think. Apple and Google launched a new software that allows public health officials around the world to create their own contact tracing apps. Thanks to Bluetooth, the app can detect people nearby you who have interacted with you and may have coronavirus. If someone tests positive for COVID-19 and shares it with the app, users who were near them within the last 14 days will get notified. Now that sounds like a really good from a health standpoint app, but for me, the privacy issue is a little bit terrifying. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about stocks. And I'd really like to ask Andy Tanner to come teach us how to evaluate these companies, Google and Apple, and then have him actually do an evaluation so we can see his process in action. So Andy, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. It's good to, uh, good to be with you. Good to be you. <laughs> good to be you. I'm a, I'm a total loser. It, uh, <laughs> good, good to have you here, Andy. I feel like it's good to be me, but I also feel like it'd be pretty good to be you as well. No, no, Andy. I, I'd like to be you. You're a little bit more brilliant than me, and you're also 6'7", <laughs> and I'm a little bit tiny, and I'm a little embarrassed by it. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Just enjoy your seats on the airplane. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So, Andy... I just told you what I consider a little bit of a terrifying story that Apple and Google are creating this app or these apps right. where health officials can track basically your movements. Yeah. I understand the purpose for the app, but I do have privacy concerns. But what I want to ask you is if you could first just teach us how to, how you evaluate any stock and then yeah. if you don't mind evaluating those two stocks. And, and I want to point out, I'm not asking you to make recommendations to sure. buy or not. I just want to use these as the example for you to teach us kind of a how-to lesson. It's, it's a pleasure to do that because, you know, here's the problem that people have whenever they get into investing, whether it be real estate or business or commodities or whatever, uh, they have no idea where prices will go. They don't know how long a certain uh, trend will last. And it's always a, the problem that they face is they don't know what to do. And the reason I think that's so important is, it, when you get in a situation where you don't know what to do, <clears throat> you consider your options. What are they? Well, I can ask someone what to do, or I can learn what to do, right? right. And uh, if I ask someone to do, I'm in the advice mode. Usually those people have charged me you know, quite a bit for that advice. As we know in the 401k, they'll take anywhere from half to more of your money to do that over time. And they do it in a sneaky way that you don't see. And so I, I like that idea of, of, hey, how do I find value and how would I analyze uh, a company and how do I find companies? And it's kind of interesting because I take what's called a top-down approach, meaning that I don't like say, well, let's, like a lot of people do it opposite. They'll, they'll be in Home Depot and they'll see a lot of customers say, well, let's go analyze Home Depot. And then they'll go on the way home and they'll drive through the McDonald's drive through and get a happy meal and say, well, gee, a lot of people here, maybe I'll look at that one too. There's 14,000 stocks out there. That's a pretty slow way to do it. Right. So we're going to, we'll take, what do you want to look at Google and you want to look at Apple? Yes. Okay. Well, just, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that before we do just understand though, I would probably um, never find those companies because the way I do this is I say, what are the criteria I'm looking for? What does value mean to me? And, uh, and I'll go run a search and often there'll be companies that I've never even heard of before. Right, right. How do you find the needle in the haystack? So think of it this way is this isn't exactly like getting married because you can always sell your stock. It's a lot easier to sell your stock and change your mind than marriage exit strategy. But nonetheless, there are things that you're looking for. So if I had said, you know, you and I are both very happily married and both of us uh, outkicked our coverage, if I can say it that way, we Absolutely. both married up. But if, uh, if someone was uh, in the market for a partner, you might say, what are you looking for? And they would create a list of criteria, wouldn't they? What are you looking for? What does it mean to you? Well, I want someone with a sense of humor and I'd like someone who 
you know, I love old movies, so I want to have someone that shares my hobbies and uh, definitely want to feel physically attracted to that person. Maybe that's important to you, or maybe it's more important that they're fit and you want to be fit from a health standpoint. So you have this criteria you go through and that kind of helps you. And that's why match.com, they take the approach of, look, don't go to a thousand singles bars one at a time. Give us your criteria for what you think is valuable. And then uh, we'll go out and run a search and we'll provide you with all these possible matches. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. So let's talk about what is value. If we're gonna run value on Google and run value on Apple, uh, price is what you pay and value is what you receive. And that's where with anything in life, you know, price is the money that comes out of your wallet and whatever you take home is the value. So entrepreneurs look to provide value and in exchange, they take your money and you give them money hoping because what they gave you is more valuable to you than the cash was. So price is what you pay and value is what you get. So as we analyze Google and Apple, uh, the first thing we're going to do is ask, well, what are, we, what are we paying? Now, that's deceptive, isn't it? Because if someone says, well, Google is so many, you know, dollars and, and Apple's so many dollars, you know, hundreds of dollars, well, that's expensive. Well, we can't answer the question of value just on price, can we? We might say, well, it's expensive. Maybe it's worth a lot. Or, oh, no, that's too expensive. There might not be value there. So we, on one side of the equation, we're going to really look at price. And on the other side of the equation, we got to look at what we're going to receive. Does so that make sense? Make, yeah, we want to make sure they match up. Yeah, we want to make sure that, that we're getting something. And, and what's tough for people in, in trying to pick a stock, this is why this is such a great, um, you know, a, a great, or should I say it was, you know, podcast or what are we, a discussion, is if I were to bring up Google right now, let's see if I can bring it up on my computer. Uh, what is it, about 1400 bucks a share or so at this recording? So 1430s and change, some 1440 and change. And so $1,500, let's just round it up. $1,500, people say, oh my gosh, that's expensive. Uh, is there value there? Well, you know what you're paying, but you don't even really know what you're getting. Right. right? Um, the one thing I would say is what you're not getting from Google is you're not getting a dividend, are you? Okay. So they're not going to pay you any part of their earnings. So right there, that tells me, do I want a dividend? Now, value, Greg, is in the eye of the beholder, too. Values in the eye of the beholder. We all feel differently about it. You know, on my shelf back there somewhere, I've got some basketballs. And, you know, it's the smallest part because that's my college basketball career. But I have an NCAA tournament watch up there. It's just a little watch. you got a silver, you know, face. And uh, if I sold that on eBay, uh, I'd probably get 500 bucks for it. You know, memorabilia, something like that. Oh, cool. NCAA. Because you only get one if you played in the tournament, right? Or okay. coach. Okay. Right. You, don't, you can't just, you know, you have to get. And so uh, maybe it's 500 bucks. Uh, if you offered me $100,000 for that, I wouldn't give it to you. Oh, because wow. to me, it's more valuable. If you offered me 200000 I would give it to you. You know, if you offered me a million, sold. <laughs> No, even for a million dollars, I wouldn't do it. So there's a personal part of this too. So let's look at, so, so we know the price of Google. So what we do at, at, you know, when we teach this is we do this based on criteria. And I'd bring up a website here. Let's bring one up here. Hey, real quick while you're doing that, yeah. you bring up their criteria so that you take the emotional pieces out. Is that fair? That's absolutely fair because if you see something running up in price, you can get pretty excited about buying it. Uh, like tulipomania, you ever heard of tulipomania where of course. back in the tulips, they had a hyper inflation of uh, tulips and people were paying these insane prices for a flower. What'd they get? Pay it a huge price. What'd you get? A flower. Right. Right. And That's so we don't want to pay these. And, and sometimes you are looking for growth and sometimes you place the bet and make it even bigger for me. I, I have very strict uh, criteria. So I'll give you an example. A um, couple of numbers. I want to see what the enterprise value is. Now, what is that? Well, you know, enterprise value is when you look at all of the stocks 
uh, or excuse me, all the shares and times it by their price, you get what's called market cap. So if I wanted to buy out, you know, do a total buyout of, uh, you know, Google here, which is going to be an insane amount of money, I look at their market cap. Because that's what I'm getting. I'm getting the I'm getting the shares. So you know how many shares are there, and what's their market cap? Then I'd look at their financials and say, what kind of uh, debt do you have, and what kind of cash do you have? Because really, if you buy a house as a rental property, you know you're going to have any repairs that are there on there. They're now yours. You know the good stuff. You get the good with the bad. Any second mortgage you might be inheriting there. Um, you know, any expenses of maintenance and salaries to take care of the property you inherit. So enterprise value helps me understand what I'm getting. So just real quick for the the listener, like to the average person, they're not going to have any idea where to find that. So there's just websites that will. Yeah, there are, there's, there's all kinds, any financial website will give this. I don't mind naming names on that. I use one often called Finbox that I like. It's about a $30 a month subscription, something like that. But you can find them, you know, there's probably free ones as well that uh, whatever you want to do. You know, so this find is public it. information. This isn't Andy Tanner secret backdoor. Yeah, I don't have any, uh, uh, I don't have any insider uh, trading abilities. I mean, every quarter they put these numbers out. And uh, the if you're going to be publicly traded, you file what's called a 10Q for quarter, every quarter, and you can see these numbers. And then the people, the number crunchers, put them on websites. But let's say I go to my, my little fin box here and I say, well, let's look at uh, Google. We might not have time to do both, you know, but let's look at Google. And I'll come over here and I'll just type in uh, enterprise value. So let's type that in. Enter prize value in the search. And I look at the enterprise value of Google is about uh, $875 billion. So they're about half as big as Apple. Okay. Uh, $875 billion. And what that does is it takes, you know, what it would take to buy all of Google. Take you 800, if you bought every share of Google, um, it costs you $875 billion. Then you'd add in how much debt they have, uh, any other liabilities, you know, equity, stuff like that. Then you pull out their cash and any investments they have. You wind up with this enterprise value of 875. So that gives me an idea of what I'm getting. Now, another thing I want to know is, are they making any money? Right. And so I'd look at something called EBITDA for me. And that's wonky. But it basically means how much money they make in before you pull out taxes and, you know, depreciation and interest and stuff like that. Is Are they making money? So think about that. If I'm going to pay for this, I kind of want to know what I'm getting as a company in terms of their financial statement. And I also want to know how much money they make. So think of it this way. And I I love, I I always go back to this. Picture a little box, like a jack-in-the-box. And you have a little crank that you turn out, you know, and and it uh, plays the little song. And it takes a year to play that song, a whole year to play that song. And at the end of the year, when the top pops up, instead of a clown, it's cash. And so I want to know how much cash comes out. I want to know what the cost of the box is. Now, if I know the price and what it produces, then I can find out whether it's valuable or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're going to make turn that into a ratio to determine. Yeah, what- yeah. And, and I wasn't very good with math, Greg. I struggled in school with math. It, it was not uh, the easiest subject for me. So I struggled pretty bad with it. And what really helped me when I started learning fundamental analysis, you know, this idea of, of value, is I said, look, it's just two numbers compared to each other rather than this division. So for example, you have the price, which is what you pay, and you have the earnings, which you'll receive, the value, right? Price is what you pay, earnings is what you're gonna receive. Uh, The growth that the company would experience, that would also be mine if I buy it, right? So price is what I pay, and the growth is what I receive. Uh, The debt that the company holds. Well, when I buy a company, I buy the, the savings, but I also buy the debt. And so that's really in a big picture how we do this. So a number that I use, and not to be too detailed and too wonky, but if you say, well, do one on Google, how would you do this? The the challenge always is the same. And it's kind of like, Andy, I want to do what you do. You know, my mom will say, hey, can I invest in what you invest in? She says, well, I'm going to exploit time decay with an inverted diagonalized iron condor, mom. You want to do that tomorrow in the options market with me? 
So there is a level of education when you say, well, Andy, tell me how you do this. A person that wants advice will lose because they'll never be able to do it. They can't do it. They have to go to a broker and have someone pick the stock. But if someone says, Andy, show me how to do this, well, that takes education. So my criteria that I like is I like to look at that enterprise value and I like to look at those earnings, that EBITDA, and I like to look at those two. And we combine those numbers in a ratio. So I'll just do uh, EBITDA over EBITDA. So enterprise value over earnings before, you know, interest and taxes and depreciation, all that type of stuff. And I can see here that uh, Google is 18.1. That's that ratio, 18.1. Okay, now I'll just tell you, for me personally, um, I like it lower than that. Now, I like it lower than 10 to really get me excited to say, wow, that would be a lot of money they're producing for a smaller enterprise value, right? A lot right, so of you're money. saying your ratio there, you prefer it 10 and under. Yeah, if, you know, if I'm bullish on it. If I'm bearish, I would find the same thing. It'd be over 20. Anything in the middle is kind of mediocre, right? Okay. So a person, if they're listening, say, well, this is, I, I, you lost me, Andy. You know, you're talking jargon now. That's for Robert Kiyosaki's number one rule. Don't talk jargon. Um, then what I do is I say, well, I, I have, when I listen to a podcast or read a book, like when I read Jim Rickard's book, I just had a big list of stuff I didn't understand. And I put it on my list of stuff to learn. Right. When there was a word I didn't understand, I said, well, I can either take advice from people, which is scary because then I have no power, or I can learn. And so, uh, so that's a big deal. So but that's how what, I would do that. From what you've taught us so far, you could go to, uh, I forget the name of that website, Finvid. Any, any bot. Yeah, there's, there's a, any of them. Yahoo Finance. Yeah, any of them. And I could take Google EV value or EV yeah. number. Yeah, you can Google that. You know, it's, it's enterprise value over EBITDA, but there's many. You could use price earnings. You know, there's, there's many that you can learn about. That just happens to be one I care well, about. Yeah, what we're talking about, you, we're talking about what you do. So, yeah. But me being a schmuck, I could just go to <laughs> yeah. Yahoo Finance, type in Google EV, and a number will pop up. And yeah, I you'd find it Google somewhere. Yeah. EBITDA. The website I use to find it that makes it easy to find, I use one called Finbox that I really like. And it's like yeah. 30 bucks a month. I don't get a commission if someone goes and buys, you know, and people can get what they want. Yahoo Finance probably has that number uh, readily available for free if you want to hunt for it. So I, but, I type those numbers in, I get the numbers, and I just turn it into a ratio. The, the EV number, the, the value number is on top. Yep. And if it's 10 or below, maybe I consider it a little closer. I look a little further. Yeah, I, I, I say, gee, that's something that fits my criteria. You know, I spoke earlier about finding a spouse. Well, I'd like someone who has a sense of humor. They better if they're married to you or I, right? Uh, someone who's very patient would be a bonus for me, right? I found uh, blind works really good. <laughs> I think, you know, I think that's a key. I, I might not want to have Marcy get her eyes checked. She might have an exit strategy. if she gets Yeah, my wife wanted to get uh, laser eye surgery. Absolutely not. Oh, uh, no, not happening, no. not happening. But you've got that su silky smooth voice. So oh, just, there you go. Uh, but yeah, those are, and that's just one of many ways to determine. And the word here, if, if you were to ask me in a, in a way that people would understand in a big picture, you say, Andy, how do you determine value of a company? I would say first, I'd say, well, I have a certain criteria that I use. And that would give people a clue. They'd say, well, okay, so he's got stuff in his head that it has to measure up to a certain standard. Right. And then the next step would say, well, what are some of those things? And if you want to go deeper, you'd say, well, some of those things he cares about the price because, you know, I got to know what I'm going to pay, but I also care about what I get. Yep. So that's another level. Oh, okay, so the criteria is based on how much I pay and what I'm going to get. Okay, well, what do, you, what do you mean what are you going to get? Well, I'm going to get the earnings. I'm going to get the growth, but I'm also going to get the debts. And so I'll start diving into numbers that will really start teaching me what type of company I'm about to own. Otherwise, I'm just a house flipper. Otherwise, I'm just a day trader looking only at a chart, hoping to buy low and sell high. If I want to be a true investor and look at this like Warren Buffett as company ownership, you can read books like The Intelligent Investor, and he'll find his criteria that he uses. And his criteria, he cares a lot about earnings. He cares a lot about growth. He says, if you give me those two things, I can begin to, to see what the value is.
Okay. So I, I want to just go back. There's two things that were crazy important here. And one is it's probably not real wise to just take a name of a company and look up the EV and the EBITDA because it's way too slow and there's way too many companies. So it's better instead to find a software or a website where you can type in an EV, an EV EBITDA ratio of 10 or less and let that, that software kick out to you all these companies that meet that criteria. I really, yeah, I really like the metaphor of match.com. Yeah. I really like that metaphor is, okay, I can go to every singles bar, you know, in my hometown and look at each of these people one at a time. And then I can say, okay, does she have a sense of humor? Does she have, does she like old movies? Does she like to be fit? Does she like to go to the gym? Does all that stuff that I might care about? And that's going to take me a long time, right? I'm going to really, you know, find, work hard. But if I can go to match.com and say, okay, here are my interests. Here's my educational background. Here's my religious background. Here's my political beliefs. And they can say, oh, here's people with commonality with all that stuff you're looking for. Man, no wonder that thing is getting people married right and left. And they might even stick together. I don't know if they do or not. But, but that is uh, really the same approach that I would take is, for example, we just looked at, at Google. And we found their enterprise value of $875 billion. And then we looked at, okay, compare that to their earnings. We came up with a ratio of, what was it, uh, 18.1. And, and it's interesting because they are part, if you look at uh, others in that, uh, here's one DHI group, they're only six. Uh, the communication services sector is 8.8. .8. So in comparison, uh, you really have to believe that Google is going to make a lot more money in the future to justify, they're, they're going to have to have their EBITDA go up way high to give you the same amount of cash and earnings that some other companies are making because their stock price is so high right now. Right. And that doesn't mean Google wouldn't go higher. But from a business standpoint, Warren Buffett, is I don't see him buying Google right now. Um, and he probably wouldn't buy more shares of Apple because it's twice what he paid for it now is, is when he bought it like at 140 a share. So, uh, so yeah, it's not just about watching that chart and say, oh, look at this going. Maybe I'll catch it while it's going up further. A true investor is going to say, what business am I really buying, right? If you treat it like buying a business, I, I don't even like the term buying stocks because if you really understand it, you're really buying a business. You know, Warren Buffett owns Fruit of the Loom. There's no stock price there because uh, he's in the underwear business. It's not even publicly traded. He owns Dairy Queen, not publicly traded. Geico, not publicly traded. He's in the insurance business. He's in the ice cream Dairy Queen business. He's in the underwear business. He's in the C's candy business. Well, he's also in the beverage business with Coca-Cola. That one happens to have a stock price because it's traded, but he's going to look at it at evaluating on earnings and, and, uh, and growth uh, as he always has, as he always has. So that's Andy. how, I don't know if that confused people, but hopefully you think in your mind, what'd you take from this podcast? Okay, what is value? Price is what I pay, value is what I get. And so the more I can analyze what it is that I get, the better decision I'll make. So go back to that marriage and dating analogy. Okay, you know, the ring is what I pay with, you know, this is what I get when I offer up that ring. Um, what do I want? The more I get to know that person, um, the better off I'm going to be doing my research. I probably don't want to have a drink, get my beer goggles on and go elope in <laughs> I've done that, Andy. research done. Yeah, that did so, not work. Yeah, so the more we learn about these numbers, whether it's a price-earnings ratio or a price-to-sales or price-to-tangible book or PEG or EBO or EBITDA or any of these fancy terms, by learning those terms and learning that jargon, now I get a chance to feel really good about what I buy instead of just listening to a broker or, gee, me at Christmas, heaven forbid I get on Robin Hood and start sending my money to those guys making them lots of cash. Uh, under the guise of advice. And that's what's, that what scares me is people right. say, oh, I'm just putting my money in 401k. Other people handle that stuff. Well, that's the choice you make. Is investing a life skill for you or is it a skill for hire? 
you know, and it's your choice. You know, I, I like to drive myself around. I, I could hire a chauffeur, but I like to drive. And I think it's probably more economical for me to drive. Uh, I like to tie my own shoes. I like to brush my own teeth. But there's other things I do prefer hire. So it's really about what you want to learn. Do you believe that investing is a skill for hire? If you do, you'll pay for it dearly. Uh, if you say, no, investing is a life skill. I should know about money. Half my life I spend working. The other half I spend retired on investing. And yeah, I think I'll you know, put as much into my financial education as I did like college because that's a more important your lot, part of your life. Your retirement life is much more important than your working life. Uh, much more important. Absolutely. Hopefully much yeah. fun. Cool so, stuff. Dude. Yeah, thank you for teaching us. I just want to be really clear for anyone listening that they can, they can take what you've just taught us and they can do this at home right now. They can go to a website and they can type in again, All this, e yeah, it's there. over EBITDA. Can you spell EBITDA? No, you're going to make me spell that. It's E as in earnings, B as in before, I as in interest, T as in taxes, D as in depreciation, and A as in amortization. Okay. So, so we there you go. The EV Enterprise over value EBITDA over EBITDA. Uh-huh. An, but and, that's, that's what I use. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one of my you're first. You're the start of the show here. So. Yeah, well, that's a start for people, right? That's yeah. that's where I would begin. And, and I look at pegs as well. I care about price. I care about earnings. I care about growth. The problem is most people hear those terms, they tune out. Because yeah. like, well, I don't know what that means. And that's their problem. Because it's a lot like my son who takes piano lessons. If he were to say, I said, son, you want to take piano lessons? And they say, well, I don't know how to play the piano. Well, that's why you take the lessons, right? And I say, well, you know, peg, I don't understand peg. Well, that's why you take the lessons so that you can. So the biggest thing is, well, I can't play the piano. We'll take some lessons. Well, no, I can't take lessons because I don't play. The, the, you know, well, I don't know what EBITDA is. So I guess I won't take the lessons because I just don't know what it is. Right. You don't go to the hospital because you're well, you, because, because you're sick. You don't go to church because you're perfect. You go to church to improve and become more perfect. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, talking a little bit about this is good and it's a good start. But, uh, you know, I will say this. If a person Googles EV over EBITDA and starts learning about they're not ready. You know, there's more to it than just that. Sure. So, yeah, that's a good point. We're not saying learn EV over EBITDA and now go invest. Now you're Warren Buffett. Right, right. But we are saying what a great place to start. Very much so. Very much so. And that's something yeah. that everybody listening right now can do. Yeah. The, the broader uh, class you're taking, if we were to label the class, would be a class on what we call fundamental analysis. So what does that word mean? Well, analysis means you look at something carefully. You analyze it. You look at something carefully. Just like when you're dating, you're going to analyze very, very carefully. What's her background or his background? What, you know, do you want, you want a homeless guy or do you want someone with a little money? Is that important to you or no? Is it love or money or both, right? What do you want? So analyze, me, analyze means look close. fundamental means there's just certain things that it stands on. Like in basketball, you got to learn the fundamentals if, if you play well, right? And so a fundamental analysis simply says, we're, look, we're gonna look at the basic things that make a company valuable. In this case, it was earnings, right? And enterprise value. That's what it really was. Right, well, great. Thank you so much, Andy. I really appreciate your time. And I, and I share your sentiments on, uh, you know, it's interesting. There's always gonna be a battle between, person, uh, between freedom and security right? Freedom of movement and, and security. And there's always going to be a battle between individual liberties and c communism and, so, and the social good. And finding that right balance is where our, our, at least, you know, our world is right now, whether you live in the United States or Singapore or China, or wherever, you know, is it worth giving up your civil liberties for the greater good of the health? Uh, is it worth giving up privacy? You know, those are exchanges that everybody has to decide. Um, you know, I'm kind of an extremist. I like what, uh, uh, what they say in uh, New Hampshire, you know, give me liberty or give me death, like right? okay. live free or die. So I tend to, I tend to say, let coronavirus get me. I, I like my privacy, but that's just my opinion. I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. All right. Well, until next week, thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. Really great to be with you. Look, I love these conversations. I do too. I learn something new every time. Awesome. All right. We'll see you next week, Eddie. Hey. Bye.